This section is discussing about the other type of data reduction. So until now we have already two data reduction techniques. The first is dimensionality reduction. It is to reduce the column and numerosity which is to reduce the rows. Okay. Now we will learn about the data compression. Data compression, yeah, there are some types of data compression. The first type is string compression. Or maybe before I explain this one, the compression means like this one, we have this data, we have columns, we have rows. Okay. So when we want to compress the data, okay, we compress on both sides. We compress on the column and we also compress on the row. We call this is the compressed data. And yeah, we have this compressed and the deduplicated data. Usually we use this in many kind of data like string. So in the string data, yeah, we need to do this kind of compressions. String means text. Okay. Text data. So there are extensive theory and well-tuned algorithms and typically lossless. <clears throat> So what is lossless? I will show you later with one graph. But only limited manipulation is possible without expansion. So this string compression. Another type of compression, you can use audio or video. Let's say you have a one hour video. Do you like football? If you watch football on YouTube, Maybe you need to work one and a half hour, 90 minutes, because we have 45 round one and 45 round two. But you can make only the highlight, only the goal, only some good event in that match. So you can reduce the highlight from one and a half hours into maybe three minutes. So you can compress the video. So that's the meaning by compression. Typically is lossy compression without progressive refinement. No, sorry, with progressive refinement. So we will like uh, we will check what is lossless and what is lossy. Time sequence. Time sequence we can also compress it. Typically short and very slowly with the time. So there are three kinds of data compression, string, audio, and time. So we can use this dimensionality and numerosity reduction may also be considered as a forms of data compression. So maybe you can join, combine with left for the column and then sampling for the row. So that's also one of the type of data compression. So there are two things you can learn from the previous slide. The first is lossless. Lossless means you have the original data and once you compress the data, you can again get the original data. Lucy, if it is Lucy, when you want to get the original data, you cannot get the real original, but the original data will be only approximated. Approximated. 
तो वही क्या क्या प्रतिबल हुआ है we call it lossless if we have for example one image when you compress it and then we want to uncompress then yeah if it, it is a lossless compression if you cannot go back to the original data it is the lossy compression we call it, this is the original data is approximated Okay. okay, this is the learning check. How many data reduction strategies do we learn? At least we have three. Okay. Dimensionality reduction, numeracy reduction, and compression, which is combining combination between the dimension and numeracy. How many dimensional reduction do we learn? We have wavelet, we have PCA, and then we have attribute selection, and then we have feature creation. So it is all about the attribute. Okay. So how many numerous the reduction techniques do we learn? We have the parameter. And then we have the non-parameter. For the parameter, we assume we have the model. Right? Regression. Just example regression. For the non-parameter, we have method like using histogram. Okay. With the histogram, we can do like binning. And then in the non-parameter, we can also use the clustering. But we are not using the clustering yet. And sampling. So, yeah. Those are the techniques that we learn. Can you mention any type of data compression? Yeah, we can have the data compression for the string. We can have data compression for audio or video. We can have the data compression for the time data, related time related data. And the types can be lossy or lossless. So if it is lossy, then you cannot get the real original data. For the lossless, you can get the original data. Okay, so this is the big picture of this chapter. Next, we are going to learn about the data transformation. The data transformation is a function that maps the entire set of values of a given attribute to a new set of replacement values subject to each old value can be identified with one of the new values um, there are some methods for this one we can use like smoothing. It is to remove noise from data. Or we can use also the attribute or feature construction. So you already learned the feature construction. New attributes constructed from the given ones. It means yeah, we transform the data. 
aggregation aggregation is also a type of transformation maybe we want to make the summary summarization or you want to make a data cube data cube construction so what we will learn more in this chapter is about the normalization it will be scaled to fall within a smaller or specific range we have min max normalization z score normalization and normalization by decimal scaling and we can also do the data transformation with discretization we use the concept hierarchical climbing so we will learn one by one first the normalization there are three types of normalization okay we will learn these three types min max z score and the normalization by decimal scale for the first min max normalization min you know this is the minimum max this is the maximum so we want to normalize a value into their minimum and their maximum the formula is something like this one we have the p prime it is the new value we want to check what is the v what is the current value and then minus the minimum of that attribute divided by the maximum of that attribute minus the minimum of that attribute and then we will combine with the new maximum of that attribute minus the new minimum of that attribute plus the new minimum of that attribute In the most common normalization with min max normalization, we will make it between zero until one. But you can set the new minimum and the new maximum as you want. For example, sometimes you want to make minus two until two. Okay, this is also possible so we can say this is the new this will be the new minimum and this will be the new maximum now let's see one example income we can have a very big range of income and i want to make it into a value between zero until one so i want to normalize it into zero and one and the range is from one thousand until eight thousand so i can know that this is the minimum okay and this is the maximum if i want to normalize it into zero and one now i would like to know yeah, this will be the new zero and this will be the new one what is six thousand so we need to find a value in between zero and one by using the formula this is the formula so we will get the formula is six thousand which is the p minus by the minimum value of that attribute so it is one thousand divided by eight thousand which is the maximum of that attribute minus the minimum of that attribute because we are going to make it into zero and one so we will also do this formula what is the new maximum 
The new maximum is one. What is the new minimum? The new minimum is zero. Plus the new minimum. So here is the result. Then I know that 6,000 US dollar is 0 0.714 with a new value between 0 and 1. And the 0 is 1,000. 1 is 8,000. So this is the min max normalization. We have another normalization, we call it Z score. In the Z score normalization, we need to find the mu and we need to find the standard deviation. So if you go to orange, you will check from the feature statistics. You can know what is the mean and what is the standard deviation of numerical attribute. The formula will be something like this. The new value is the V minus the new or the mean divided by the standard deviation. Let's assume I have one attribute and let's the mu is 5000. And then let the standard deviation is 1250. So I have a value 6000. Then if I want to normalize this value, the formula will be something like this. 6000 is the value. I will do the minus with the mu and then I will divide with the standard deviation. So I will get the value 0. Okay. So the alternative way of this standardizing this numerical value, okay, we can use this set for. So this Z score is the you know X is the value, the raw data that I want to standardize and the mu is the min and the tau is the standard deviation. So the distance between the raw score and the population mean in units of the standard deviation. So there will be a negative. The negative means when this raw score is below the mean. So the previous example, we have the value is 6,000. But what about if the value is 4,000? Then of course, 4,000 minus 5,000 is minus. Then the value will be minus. Okay. And it will be positive when it is above the average. Therefore, yeah, some of the statisticians, they propose there will be an alternative way because sometimes we do not want to have the negative. We can use the mean absolute deviation. In this, we will make the absolute. We will make it the negative into positive. So the formula will be like this one, we will check the raw score or the raw value and then we will minus with the MF. This MF is the average of those values X1, X2, Xn and then we will divide with the N. So this is the average. Then we will check for every of the deviation. We call it deviation. X1 with the average, X2 with the average, and so on until we have the n and we divide with n. 
So the standardized measure will be yeah. Uh, we have the S is based on this uh, mean absolute deviation, not using the standard deviation. Okay, so this S is based on it. Maybe let's see the example. Okay, what is the difference between the standard deviation and the absolute deviation? When you use the standard deviation, you will use the mean square error. You know that the standard deviation, you will do this mean square error, and then at the end, you will do the square root. So, for example, I have this data 90, 75, 85, 180. So, the total is 40, 430, and the mean is 86. And if I want to get the standard deviation, I will do the 90 minus 86 and then power of 2. 75 minus 86, power of 2. 85, 86, power of 2. And so on. So we will get the value. And this value, I want to get the standard deviation. So we will divide with the n, which is 5, and then we will do the square root. So the standard deviation is 8.6. But I can do with the other option, which is the absolute deviation. Okay. So we will just make the range smaller. How? Well, we do not make it a square, but we just make the absolute. For every data, we have the same mean, and then we want to find the error. 90 minus 86, so the error is 4, 75 minus 86, the error is 11, and so on. So we will get the MAD value is 7.2. So usually with this absolute deviation, the range is smaller than the standard deviation, usually, but not always. And yeah, with the set score, the set score will be the one that you already see on the previous one. What is the value? What is the value of the, the row score minus the mean divided by the standard deviation? But for this one, the row score divided by the mean and divided by the MAD value. So if you look at the result, somehow it is yeah, similar. Okay? And we still have the negative. We still have the negative. But this negative, yeah, it is the range yeah, will be a little bit smaller than the mean square average. It depends on the data itself, whether you want to use this mean square error or you can use the MAD. There is another normalization. We call it the normalization by decimal scheme. This normalization by decimal scaling, we have this formula. P prime, equals to the P divided by 10 power of J. J is the smallest integer such that the maximum of this P prime with the absolute is less than one. Maybe it is difficult to understand. Let's see with example. I have this data. And I want to normalize the data. 
minus 10, 201, 301, minus 401, 501, 601, and 701. In order to normalize the CST theta, step one, we need to find the maximum absolute value. This one. The maximum absolute value. Because we want to have this condition. We need to satisfy this condition. Based on this number, the maximum is 701. Next, we will iterate J until it satisfy the condition. So J can be stopped from one. Okay. How we can create this one? If J equals to one, we so because we just have the condition of the maximum so we will divide 701 divided by 10 power of 1 so the result is 70.1 70.1 is it less than 1 no. Then, because it is no, we will move to j equals to 2. When j equals to 2, we have 701 divided by 10 power of 2. So, 701 divided by 100. The result will be 7.01. Now, we will check. 7.01, is it less than 1? No. Then we will go to the next J. We will check the J equals to 3. 701 divided by 1000. And the result is 0 0.701. Is it less than 1? Yes. So we will select J equals to 3. So we choose j equals to 3 because it satisfies this condition. Then we will divide the given data by 1000 because we select the j equals to 3. So the new data after the normalization will be minus 10 divided 1000. 201 divided 1000, 301 divided 1000, and so on. So this is the new data after you do the normalization. Okay. So let's check in the orange about the normalization. Let me just use this iris. In the pre-process, in the pre-process, there are some Normalize. Okay. You can see normalized features. So it is just a very basic normalization in the orange. We can make the standard drive to mu equals to zero and the standard deviation equals to one. Or we can create the center to mu equals to zero. We can create to standard deviation equals to one. Or we can normalize to interval minus 1 until 1. And we can normalize to interval 0 until 1. Okay. 
So these are the option from Onyx, but you can uh, define by yourself if you want to create a new normalization techniques. Let's say I want to make it normalized to interval 0 0.1. So I can create a new data table. So this is the new value for every of the averages. So the sepal length has been changed to value between 0 and 1. Sepal width also has been changed to value between 0 and 1. And once you have this, you can look at the, maybe the scatter plot. So the pedal length and the pedal width, because they are is still in the same range, so you can see the plot is similar with the original data. But now the number is between zero until one, and it's also between zero until one for the pedal width and the pedal length and all the other attributes. Discretization. Until now, we learned that there are two different data. The first data is the categorical and numerical. In discretization, we can distinguish it into three. The first is the nominal. The nominal is values from the unordered set. So you still remember, not order. Maybe about the color, red, green, yellow, blue, we have no order. Ordinal, it is a value with order set. Maybe the military rank, academic rank. Okay. We will have uh, which one is number one, which is number two, which is number three. Okay. And we can have also the numeric. Numeric means the real number. It can be integer or the real numbers. So these three attributes, you can discretize. Okay. Last time I mentioned you, discretize. Discretize is from the word discrete. I want to make those value into a discrete or I want to make it into a kind of character. So discretization means we can divide the range of a continuous attribute continuous attribute into intervals. So the interval labels can then be used to replace the actual data values. So as I mentioned to you, let's say I have eight. It is 25 and then 30 and then 45 and then 55 and then 61. So if I have a new attribute, it's category, for example. Maybe yeah, this one is young. This one is young and so on. And then this is senior. Okay. So we can make the continuous attribute into a new data value, which is the categorical. So we can reduce the data by this discretization. And the discretization is about the supervised and unsupervised. <clears throat> we will learn more about this one later. And we can also use this discretization to split or merge. So split or merge, we can think about the data cube. The data cube, before we have the top down, 
from the Q1, we can have January, we can have February, we can have March. Okay. So it means we can split. Okay. Or if we want to merge, of course, we want to merge the January, February, and March into Q1. This characterization can be performed recursively on an attribute. And it, we can prepare it for further analysis, like classification. So some methods for the data discretization. Okay. Binning. Binning is, we call it a top-down, okay. because we need to select the data, the distribution, and then whether you want to use the equal width or equal frequency, and it is unsupervised. Unsupervised means we, we don't know what is the standard. We will just make the equal frequency. We want to make three pins. So that's only our assumption. Histogram analysis. It is also a top-down split and it is unsupervised. And clustering analysis. This is also unsupervised. So we will learn more what is the supervised and unsupervised. And the clustering analysis, it can be top down and it can be bottom up. For the decision tree analysis, this kind of discretization is more supervised. And it has a top down split. Correlation analysis, the chi square analysis. It is unsupervised and it is bottom up. From the data, we will check the correlation and then we want to discretize this. So the pinning, as you might know, pinning is based on the two approaches, equal width and equal frequency. If we have the equal frequency, maybe we can see this kind of distribution. If we use the equal frequency, if we use with the clustering, somehow yeah, the, the data will give you a little bit different group. So we will learn more what is the pinning clustering, but from this one, with the pinning, we can see, we can have this three pins. But with the clustering, we can have this three groups. So, yeah, there will be a trade-off. What is the best way, with pinning or with clustering? So with pinning, somehow, yeah, it is good because we can see in the middle of the data. But in the clustering, it can show more something like, yeah, maybe this group, this group, and this group more. We can also do later with the discretization using the classification and the correlation analysis. We will learn the classification. One example of the classification is decision tree analysis. This is an example about the pinning or the tumor. We call it the supervised because we know the class level. Let's say in this case, it is banning tumor or malignant tumor. Banning tumor means it is just tumor which is not dangerous. Malignant tumor is dangerous or cancerous. So it can lead to cancer. So in the medical, yeah, 
they need to distinguish this one because they need to know whether some analysis is cancerous or not cancerous. So they need to give the label. If they do not have the label, it is not good in the classification result. Because this is top down, and we will learn more how we can create the decision tree analysis with this kind of things. And you already learned the correlation analysis by based on the chi square. So this is also a way of discretization. We can use the class information and then we can find the best neighboring intervals. We call it this is the bottom up approach because we can see if the distribution, yeah, it similar distribution of the classes with the low chi square values, we can merge it. And we can check one by one of the attributes. If it is low, we can merge, we can merge, merge, and then until there are some stopping condition. Uh, okay, actually I can explain all those things, but there will be the learning check that you need to do. Let me stop here. Okay.